Here we are on the intake manifold. This is the, the factory LT1 intake. And what we're going to do is go way up inside of here. And there's some mods that I have to do on the injectors area that's a wet flow thing. I got to go in here and open that up, clean all that up, and we'll hit it from the front. Um, I'll get more into that here specifically, but let's take a look at something. What I'm paying attention to is look at this area right here where your injectors are and how they alleviate it right in here for the fuel spray pattern. There's tricks you do in this area to help break up and disperse the fuel because it's really hard liquid from my understanding when it first comes out of the injector and it becomes a mist on downstream so there's some tricks you can do in here to help that process which helps throttle response so anyway let's go ahead and get this part done and over with okay here we are at the final assembly and I made a last minute decision on something these heads were really good I put so much time into them the owner of the heads did this on a budget, and that's what all of us have to do. We can do according to what, you know, our budget constraints are. Plus, when you look at the price of a new set of heads, one thing is some people automatically will say, well, I can get a new set of heads for that, even though they're not getting what they think. We won't go into that. But right when I got ready to put these together, I had already checked the valves. And what I wanted to show you is what I'm looking for in a valve. Okay, let's zoom in a little bit. What makes a difference here, one of the major factors, is the taper on the stem. These are the valves that come out of the heads from the factory. Okay, these valves come from a company called SI, and they're a cheater valve for their round track stuff. So it's by far a step up from the material and grade quality that are in the valves that come in the head. It's not quite stainless, but I tell you what, these valves are a lot better than some of the stainless from China that is out there from companies, and I, I can't poke names here, I might get sued. But uh, just because it's stainless doesn't mean it's stainless. You have to get exact material quality, uh, uh, material design and everything but I can assure you that these valves right here are better than about 75 percent of the standard stainless valves that are in most of the performance heads out there when you buy them assembled I had these here they belong to another customer and I just made the last minute decision because of what I'm fixing to show you to go ahead and use these and order my other customer another pair because he won't be done for a week or two so he'll never notice it um, plus I can get bigger diameter I always do that whenever I try to do something to help somebody if the money's the same I'll get them bigger anyway what I'm showing you is this when you're measuring a valve you take your four digit decimal place micrometer and what you're looking for is the measurement let me give you another angle here. Measurement in three places. The top of the stem. I'm picking up a 341. And a 4. 341.4. I come here in the middle. And I've got... 342.2 and right here near the bottom I've got exactly a 341. The books say, and I'm talking about the SAE books along with several other books that I use, that what you want is no more than a half thousandth of taper from the top to the bottom. Because if you get taper in here, and that, when I say 0 .0005, uh, that's maximum allowable service limit according to the books. Uh, a lot of the books I've read say you can have as much as 1,000th from here to here. And to say that one of them's right or wrong ain't necessarily the case, but what I can tell you is this. 
when you have the least amount of taper from here to here, then when you hone the guide by hand and use the bronze guides, you get a lot better clearance when there's no taper because you got the better uh, floating cushion of oil that gets in between here. It's more leveled out. The valve job just lasts an incredible amount longer. Most of his valves were right at the serviceable limit. There was about five of them that was about six tenths. This was one of them. This right here was seven tenths from top to bottom. Would it work and would it be okay? Yeah, I could put them in there and they would work um, probably several thousand miles, but eventually what's going to happen is it's going to cause the taper in the stem to put taper into the head and or into the valve guide and a stock set of heads that you're driving every day, I would say, you know, that ain't no big deal. But this thing, being a stage four level head, I just ain't got the heart to put them old valves back in it. So I'm just going to go ahead, put the new valves in it, even though I haven't informed the customer yet that I'm doing this. And I'm going to let him make the call on it. If he decides that um, he don't want to pay for them, that's fine. Uh, what is it they say? Uh, whenever you give somebody, don't expect nothing back. But I just couldn't send it out the door like that, knowing there's taper in the valves. I know the gentleman was on a budget, but um, I can't let it go like that. So I'm going ahead and putting the new valves in it. And when I, as soon as I put them in, I noticed immediately how much better the feel was because now I got perfectly straight, guys, perfectly straight valves. This thing is going to last a very long time. So, you know, they weren't but $105 for the valves. It was a little less than stainless, a little more than stock. But I feel a whole lot better knowing that he's got these in here. And the trick is it looks like it looks like an OEM stock valve. If you look at the bottoms, you can see it's got that look. But these valves right here are a grade up from OEM and just below stainless. So what you got going on right here is they're, they're cheater valves. They also make them in just a touch bigger diameter like a 197 or 198 and then a 153 or 4 for the round track guys that are looking for every advantage that they got. These are the cheater valves that are heavier material but they're stock diameter. So they are 194150. They're not a bigger valve. All right, let's go ahead and set the spring height, check the stem height, and conclude it. Okay, when I'm putting the valves in the heads, one thing I wanted to show you, if the thing's going to be set for a while without running, what I'll do, and I'm going to do it this time anyway just to show you, is I'll take a little bit of white lithium and I'll put on the valve stems, okay? And because you never know, people say, oh, I'm going to get it running right now, I'm going to get it running right now, then problems happen and the heads end up setting for a long time. So I don't take the chance because my clearances are very tight, very tight. I almost crossed the borderline on the valve sticking in the guide. But with a bronze guide, if you don't do that and set them up super tight, they will loosen themselves up when the bronze liner establishes a wire pattern. So the best way to do it is to, I put a lot of lithium on here. That's the first part of it. Let me show you the second part. The second part that I do is I lay the head down or off to the side and then I shoot 10W40 oil in it. I go around the guide hole. I just don't shoot a drop. I make a complete circle in the guide. So what we got here is two different lubricants, 1040 oil, and then the white lithium. And I do that because now this thing can sit for a very long time. And maybe even I've had them sit for a year or so. And I make sure, like I said, I'm going around a circle on the guide. Then when I put the valve in, I do it in a screw method. I slide it in. I'm going, see, look here, I go back and forth very easy, okay? This ensures that I just don't push it down. I don't get in a hurry. I let it screw down in there. That's getting that lubricant and the oil touching the valve and the guide. So there is no way right now 
that, uh, well, I had one that had a funny feel on it right there. See, that's another thing. See how I get feel? I'm feeling it. It has a certain feel as it's going down the guide till it lands up against the seat. I got one right here that felt a little funny. Probably a valve. These valves, even though they're higher quality, they're not a real good stainless or as good as some of the high quality stainlesses. And it's doing it right there at the edge. It just feels something. So I'm going to take this back out, wipe it, and re-examine this and take a look and see what's causing it. And in order to do that, you have to take some bitch. You have to take all the grease back off the valve, spray it with the um, carburetor cleaner, and then go in here, clean the top of the guide out, which is kind of okay because i got to wipe the oil out and we're in anyway. You can see the oil dots that it leaves behind where it squished out the oil, the lithium displaced it. And that's all. I just wanted to show you how I put guides in, what valves in the guides, and what lubricants that I use to do it. Now, if it was going to be fired off right then, right now, then I'd probably just put oil in it because the other thing about it, when you pack them with that lithium, and you do that with it, when the motor first starts up, it'll really puff a lot of smoke. For about 10 seconds, it'll throw a bunch of white smoke out. I've had several people over the years call me up and go, wow, it smoked, it smoked. And I said, give it a minute, let it clear up. Sure enough, a few seconds later, smoke was gone. It does not hurt nothing to pack them that way. I've done it for 25 years. All right, anyway, on to the next procedure. What I found right here was a little bitty bit of a blemish. That's why you check the feel. And I just take a file and just lightly touch the edges. I could barely feel it with my fingers. I try not to go too much up on the guide area, but you knock that little blemish off. And that right there, I guarantee you took care of it. I could see it. It was like a, just a little bit of a blemish. So, this is a real fine grip file, so don't go yikes. It's perfectly fine. All right, now it um, ought to slide in there pretty.